Hey everyone, welcome back to Rhythm Railroad. This is uh, one last update of my space, uh, my new acquired space for the HO layout that I'm building down here. Um, I just wanted to make this video because um, the next video you're gonna see will already have some bench work up. Um, I pretty much wrapped things up uh, this, this past week with details and um, you know small things. Uh, for the most part, so little things like painting, you know, a few odds and ends um, I'm going to leave until I have a little more time, but I, I really want to get this bench work going So that's why I decided to uh, To make this video because it's probably the last time you're gonna see bare walls <laughs> before I start uh, covering everything with uh, with lumber um, I'm very very happy with how the space came out. Um, I'm glad I planned it the way I did with uh, a very neutral kind of, um, you know, approach. It's just a very light gray on the walls um, and then just white and the tile, which is also gray, uh, is nice because um, it's easy to work with, uh, with spillage and with dust and with anything that lands on it. It's easy to clean up rather than having like a hardwood floor or some kind of a plastic or whatever it is. So, um, I'm, like I said, I'm really happy. I'm also happy with uh, the the changes that I made. For example, that wall right here, I uh, used to go all the way up to the edge of the stairs, uh, making this very limited in case you had to get stuff down the stairs. So now as I'm bringing the lumber down, I'll have more clearance here. Uh, also considering there's gonna be a little bit of bench work, like a very tiny amount on this wall. So it's gonna, you know, it's gonna push into the uh, aisle a little bit. But uh, by moving this wall back, I've gained a lot of clearance for long pieces of wood and things like that. Uh, the other thing I'm happy with is the heating system that I chose. Um, it might be overkill, because I have four radiators, one, two, three, and four, but it, it evens out the heat, and I got to test it out because we had a few cold days. Uh, it's a very comfortable situation anywhere you go in the room. Because um, I had a problem upstairs with having just one unit and that really uh, heating evenly around the area. So whatever, uh, even though it might be too much, it's still uh, doing the job very, very well. Um, the other thing that I'm happy with is the uh, layout of the laundry room. Um, because it, it allows me, this angle wall here, allows me to get the, the radius and the turns and the curves um, to be a lot wider. This way I don't have some jagged corners. Originally that wall was gonna go to that pole and then it would have been a 90 degree into the room. But um, after a few discussions with my wife, we were able to compromise, not compromise, but agree on how far to put this wall. Um, I also gained a little space because she wanted to put it up to this pole, uh, making this, this square here very, very tight. So. I got another foot or so. Actually, it's more like two feet that way. Um, and her, she has plenty of room in there anyway. So that's gonna be, um, well, I'll explain the layout in, in just a bit. Um, so I'm happy about that. I'm happy that we decided to go with a pocket door, which is coming. Uh, we ordered it, so it should be here soon. Uh, because then you don't, have, you don't have to deal with swinging doors in or out. Uh, it just tucks into the wall and then I don't have to worry about anything. Uh, getting in the way, especially because the tracks are going to go through here. So I'm going to have to have my own swing gate that opens up toward, you know, toward this side. Um, so happy about that as well. Um, I'm happy, very, very, very happy that we were able to move the gas pipe that was located in the middle of the room into this, uh, you know, uh, channel here. So this box that I made here has not only the gas pipe, but it's got other electrical stuff and um, ethernet and uh, some some PEX um, that I use for plumbing. Um, so yeah, it's a, that was a huge relief because I didn't want some pipe just going down the middle of the ceiling here. Uh, the other thing I'm happy with is the amount of outlets that I decided to go with, including some quads here and there. So there's outlets basically every four feet or so. 
Uh, the only thing is that I decided not to do it on this wall because of the pocket situation. So I didn't bother with that. And this wall, uh, because I'm not sure if this wall is gonna stay here in the future, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming it will, but who knows, the, you know, when we, if we sell the house later on, if they want to knock that down. I don't know. So anyways, there's plenty of outlets here. Um, and I also included um, Ethernet and HDMI that goes over to the other wall. Comes out there. So that I can hook up a TV and anything else. If I want to run a laptop from, you know, from the back here over to the TV wall, it's all hardwired, which is nice. So I'm happy about that as well. Uh, the other thing I'm happy with is the way we set up the lights because for the most part, if I can kind of like visualize everything, it looks like they're going to be in the right place for the way that the bench work is going to be situated. Um, meaning there's not going to be like a, like a, a, a piece of wood or like some kind of a covering, you know, on top of the light. So. Uh, we'll see. I mean, you know, things change with, with planning and stuff like that, so... But for the most part, I think it's in the right place. Uh, the other thing I'm happy with, with the design, is that we left this open completely. Because uh, the turn, this turn, which is going to be a peninsula here, is going to tuck under the stairway in order to save space. Because the way I had it before, it wasn't really making use of that space there. I was kind of like going around it and... It would have just been like, you know, a few tracks in there for like a little industrial area. But now, uh, as I'm tucking the, the radius in, which is the biggest thing that, you know, everybody deals with, that big, you know, part of the peninsula at the front, it just, it just becomes very wide, especially if you want to make it realistic. You, you want to try to go as wide as possible. Uh, so I'm able to pull off, I said a, a 40 or, or larger in, in previous videos, but I actually got some track and I... You know, I, I, I uh, shaped it to a 36 inch radius and that was pretty much all I could do. And the reason being is that as I go back toward the wall, I need, I, you know, I need space to, to be able to turn it again. So if I go too wide, then I'm too close to that wall. So that's why I had to kind of do it. And I have the same situation on this side. So this is pretty much evenly split. Um, and so, but I'm glad I, I did that and, and put like a wall here or a closet or whatever. Uh, once I figure out how high the trackage is going to be going inside under the stairs there, then I could build some storage under it and, you know, whatever it's going to be. But uh, until then, I don't want to commit to a certain height and then I'm forced to, to use that height. So that's why I left it alone. Um, uh, I also like that I have all the house electronics neatly tucked in here, meaning my cable box is in there, my ethernet um, bays are in there, uh, all my splitters are in there. Um, what else do I have in there? I have a few more things in there that are just, you know, for the TV upstairs and whatever TVs are gonna be down here and everything else that, that's uh, network based. It's all tucked away in there nicely. I just pop, up the, pop off the hatch if I need access to it and it's all laid out nice in there. Um, so that's basically it. Oh, the, um, electrical panel is in there and I'm really happy with the way this came out. I tried to go in as far as possible, you know, within the code restrictions or whatever. And then also as tight that way as possible. You know, they said I had to leave at least a foot between, you know, the, the stuff here, the pipes and whatever are here and the wall. So, you know, I tried to go in as far as possible. All my sprinkler stuff's in here, so I have to get out, I have to have access to it. Um, but the doors came out nice, they open up, um, and they don't get in the way a lot because they're bifolds. And I actually set them up so you can open them up and then tuck them in. Uh, and I'll try to show you. So I can actually open them up like this, rather than you know the traditional way. But then I can tuck them in completely by doing that. See what I mean? So, you know, it just allows me more, not more clearance necessarily, but more options in case I need to get this door out of the way while I'm working. But uh, I put some magnets there to hold it in place and that's it. And it came out actually perfect. So happy with that as well. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, the, the windows, I'm not sure 
you know, I tried to make the, the molding nice and, and, and flat against the wall. And I got the smallest molding I can get so that in case I'm running tracks here, they're not, they're not sticking out like, you know, three quarters of an inch or whatever it is. So that, that's good with that. Uh, obviously, I need to prime this and paint it. That's, you know, I actually did that yesterday. So uh, that's the last thing that I would do there. Um, so yeah, so this will be basically the room. Once I finish building the layout, and let's say in whatever, 10 years, 20 years, we decide to move from this house, the good thing is that, you know, once you pull the stuff off the wall, there, there will still be a room here, just like this. It's just gonna be patchwork and paint. But uh, it's not, you know, I see some layouts sometimes that are, you know, they start building without actually finishing the room. So it's like either sheet sheetrock that's not completed yet, no, there's no mud. Or I see like, you know, there's no ceiling or, or it's just down to like insulation and, uh, and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I was going to do it that way because it would have been a lot cheaper. Um, and I would have been going, I would have been, been started already with the layout. But I decided it would be more uh, convenient and more uh, beneficial later on to just have a finished room. So this way, when we detach everything, we could still sell the house with a finished room rather than then start to have to finish the sheet rock and get a ceiling up and, and all that stuff. So um, I'd rather spend the money up front and get it done. Anyways, that's just me. Um, the, uh, okay, so I'm gonna talk about the layout uh, and the way I've modified it, you know. I mean, it's, it's a small modification, but it's, it's um, I think I'm going to benefit more uh, I'm going to be able to use more space uh, in a more efficient way. So here's what I have. There's a few things that I still have doubts about, but um, uh, here's, here's a general situation. This room here from the stairs, this quadrant here, is basically going to be all my yard engine facilities, car uh, facilities. And it's also going to be the transition down to the uh, staging uh, which will be just, you know, about a foot under the main level. So the main level is going to be at about 40, I say 43 or 44. I don't want to go, 48 would have been ideal, but then I didn't want to get too high because then, first of all, I'm going to be, you know, hitting the windows right away, which I'm trying to avoid. And secondly, um, then I'd rather have a larger gap between the main level and the upper level than try to, you know, make it just a foot apart or something like that. So. The, since the trains are running all the way around the entire perimeter and including the peninsula area, that gives me a lot of room and space to lift, you know, to, to have a grade up to the second level where I can get a decent amount, you know, close to two feet um, of clearance between the main level and the second level. Uh, that's another thing that drives me crazy about layouts sometimes that, that there's such a small gap between the main and the, and, and the upper level that you're kind of like you know, lowering yourself to kind of see what's in the back and, you know, I'm trying to avoid that. So anyways, the, the idea is that that main level at 43 or whatever is going to be, um, is going to be flat. The main level is uh, flat because it's going to be yard space. So um, basically this is the, the entrance point here, the throat. And as it opens up, it's going to be basically open by the time we get to that pole there. Uh, I want to have like maybe, I don't know, four, five, six, Track. So it's probably going to be two feet away off the wall on every side uh, for trackage. Um, and then I want to have a, a, a rail, a line that tucks, that starts to tuck under and drop, 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 drop all the way until I guess to the staircase where the staging would uh, b begin. Um, but aside from that, the, uh, there's going to be a throat here and it's going to be double ended. So there's going to be a throat here as we get to the staircase because again I want to make sure that I narrow it when we get to the actual stairway because I don't want to block you know um, the area here the, the past the, the aisle so that's the main level so basically once you get out of the yard you'll be coming out this way and this will be heading in, in my situation north because the idea is that I'm going from Binghamton to Schenectady uh, so kind of going north, you know, with a little bit of east, but uh, so it would come out this way. So it'll be either 
double main here or single main. I haven't decided yet. But the, I want to try to make it as narrow as possible here so I can have my swing gate without a lot of scenery. So my swing gate's not like, you know, a foot wide or whatever it is. Um, then once we get past here, it kind of, you know, it'll make the turn that way, a soft turn. Uh, I might build out to the pole here with other, you know, like industries and stuff that would be trailing points here. But it obviously will, will come this way and then turn out that way, um, you know, as far as the means go. And I have a little room here. I, I do want to curve my backdrops. So I'm going to try to, you know, shove it as, as close as I can to the corners. But I, I don't want those hard corners like that with the backdrop. Uh, but I can still have some industry or something back here if I want to. Um, so the other thing is that once we hit this point here, I'm going to start climbing. One of the, one of the lines is going to start climbing at about one and a half percent, maybe a little less. And, and that'll be the one, the line closer to the wall. The line in front of the wall will, will stay at, at the level height at 43. So it'll kind of do this as, as it's going. Uh, the reason being is that I want the lower line to be a short line. That's going to be, you know, more for industries. I'm probably going to make it code 70. I'm not sure. Um, but it's going to be a slower moving train with, you know, more like local businesses and stuff. Well, the, the, you know, the higher line is going to be more like the high speed traffic. So um, that's going to continue, you know, as close as I can to the wall here. I got to figure out another gate here with backdrop. That's going to be a pain in the butt, but uh, I'll figure it out. And then uh, I'm gonna try to hug this corner as much as I can so that I can get my radius to start, you know, creeping toward the pole here. There's going to be a dividing wall here so that I can, you know, um, have two scenes, one here and one on the other side. And this, this is gonna be my peninsula here. Um, but while the back line is climbing, the main line is gonna dip under. And it's going, there's gonna be a bridge here. It's gonna go through the wall and then go out the other side at still 40, 43. So hopefully by this point, we're, we've gained about three inches, four inches, you know, so that I can, probably four inches I'm gonna to have to get so that I can clear the, uh, the lower track. If I can't, I'm gonna to have to just start dropping a little bit, a little further back so I can get under and then I'll come back up again. But the idea is that the short line is gonna be just the perimeter of the entire basement. So anyways, following the upper line, I might have a siding at some point here because, you know, obviously there's no, there's only a single main at that point. Uh, but anyways, it's gonna come out, it's going to go into the room a bit, and then it's going to go really wide. This is what I was talking about with the stairs. So that it dips under the staircase. I'm probably gonna make a tunnel here because, you know, I wanna make sure that it gets as close to this as possible. Um, this way I don't waste space. And I still have a little room here if I want to do something uh, scenic here. I just got to get some lighting down here. Um, but anyways, um, what I wanted to say was that uh, by doing that wide turn, I'm, I'm gaining a lot of usable space here uh, for, for track work. So um, it'll come around and then it'll go back into the room on this side where the wall would have been here and then now it's going to go again closer to the wall it'll be now it'll be about you know five six seven inches higher than the original 43 inches so now it'll be climbing you know right around here somewhere um while the other line just came through there now my idea and i think it might work is that once i get here now i officially start the second platform of the bench work. So there'll be, you know, the 43 down here. And then as this connects, now you'll be in a totally different level. So it'll be a totally different place than down here. And what's going to divide everything is that wall here. So it won't look funny, hopefully. <laughs> um, so now you have, you know, the line running up here, you have a separate situation down here with the industries and whatever. So that line will continue back to the yard over there. So it'll be just a loop all the way around. And then as this is climbing, now we have, we're starting to gain the correct height that I want. So that by the time we get back to the yard, now we're way higher. We're about two feet off the 43 inch mark. 
Uh, and now we're riding around here, which is at about eye level, which is nice. And, you know, it'll, it'll keep climbing very, very, very gradually. You know, hopefully 1%, if that. And then I, I want to be right at the window height, like where the trains are going this way, by the time I get to this level. So you'll have the yard down here, that'll be the upper level, but the yard will be two feet and the upper level will be one foot because that angle clears your, your sight line. So you can see all the way to the back. If I come out too far, it might, you might have to start dipping to see the back of the layout. So that's the idea to go a little narrower. Uh, it might not be a foot difference, but it'll definitely be smaller than the bottom level. Uh, and that'll just, you know, come around and it'll, it'll basically be uh, in parallel to what was going down down here, except now that we're at the upper level, um, you know, it'll be less stuff because I won't have the six tracks or whatever it is here. It'll just be like a, a single main or a double main, uh, and then it'll keep going uh, past the door the same way. I'll have a second gate that, that you know, swings open here. Um, the other thing is that as I go higher, what I want to make it look like is I'm, that I'm more into the country. I'm more, there's less stuff going on, just trees and just open fields and things like that. And I am going with a backdrop that's going to be all photo backdrop, including the sky and everything. So hopefully they can tie it in so it looks continuous all the way through. But up here it'll be more, you know, rural. Uh, so as I'm going through here, it'll be, you know, at this height, like I said. And it'll basically be, you know, doing the same thing as the bottom level. The only difference is that once we get into the peninsula, now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make the turn a little bit uh, sooner because of the angle of the staircase. So the, the turn's gonna be here, but from what I understand, the higher you go and, and you know, if you're at an eye level, you can pull off at like a 33 inch radius or, or even, even smaller, like a 30 inch radius, and it won't really be that obvious to the eye that you're actually like, you know, pushing really hard on the turn. Uh, so the 33 will allow me to tuck this here or, or whatever it is, uh, while the other lines down here, so it'll be nice and spacious here. I, I didn't want to tuck the track all the way up to the wall. I want to I have a little open room here. So if you're coming down the stairs and you sit down on the stairs, you can see the layout on this side. Um, I just don't. I don't like. I made this, this mistake with my end scale layout upstairs that it was all on top of me, and then I could I couldn't even step back to to really enjoy the layout because I, I had layout all over me, you know. So. I want to be able to stand here and see through, or stand over there and see through this way. Um, so that, that's the plan, you know, who knows how, how it's gonna actually turn out, but we'll see. So now that we're at a nice high level here, what's gonna happen is you'll have actually three decks here. You have 43 inches, you'll have whatever here that, that height is, and now you're gonna be, you know, nice and high here. And the reason I wanna go this high is because I want to make the return loop as close to the ceiling as possible. So as it gets into this area, we'll be real high at it. I'm only going to go like, you know, a foot or a half, uh, six inches or, you know, just enough to get the, a, a little bit of scenery in there. But this will be barely any scenery up here, just trees and things. Um, and then the idea is that I'm going to make my return loop either here, where it's going to go like this, you know, right up against the ceiling and turn back around. That way, or I might make the turn and then make the return loop here. That light's gonna be in the way, but whatever. So I might make the return loop here and then tuck it in so that it's not so intrusive on this part of the room. And then obviously we go back down again. Um, so that, that's basically the main line, uh, the way it's gonna work. Now what I like about that is that when you walk into the space here from the stairs, you walk down, what you're going to see is bench work on the perimeter, but there's going to be a nice open space here, which is what I want. Uh, I don't, I don't want to make another, you know, a bunch of stuff in here and just really cram in too much track I already have enough. And then the upper, that loop, that return loop is going to be tucked in um, as high as that box anyway. So I had an idea of like even doing like a little cover so that you don't see the return loop and it just comes out there. Uh, so it's more like, you know, it's, it's less obvious if there's like tracks in there. Uh, so the only time you wouldn't see the train would be inside that. 
but I would leave it open under just so it can get access to it if something went wrong. But there's not going to be any turnouts or anything like that. And I'm not having upper staging. It's just too much. I don't have enough room up there to be fooling around with that. So that, that's basically the way it's going to look. It's, uh, similarly, when you walk down the stairs, what you're going to see here is bench work, bench work, bench work. But there's going to be open area here where you can just stand back and, and look at the layout. And the same thing on the other side. Uh, but also when you're standing here, because remember the, the upper track is only going to be around here somewhere. You can see through, it'll, it'll breathe a little bit. Um, and if, if I get air conditioning down here, it'll actually make it into that room, uh, there's space there. So that's important also. Um, so the only thing I haven't spoken about is my staging. My staging, like I said, it's gonna start dropping somewhere behind or in front of the bench work here. Um, I gotta figure out how, how much I can do it, how much I can, uh, how much, the grade should be before I start making the cars, the, the locomotives slip. But uh, it'll basically be, I gotta get it down to wherever the staging level is gonna be by the time I get to the far part of the staircase, so right here. Because I don't want this to be, you know, opened up here. I want us to be super close. I'm, I'm only gonna go like two inches, I think. Uh, just enough to get uh, the track there. And then over here, there will be the, the opening of the staging. And it's going to open up into whatever six or whatever you know, tracks. And the, all those are going to go around under the bench work that's already there. So I'm assuming that'll be at like 39 or, or a little less. And then it's going to, remember there's a peninsula here. So that's all going to follow on this side of, of the peninsula, the opposite side of the wall. Um, and then the idea is that the, this will be kind of like the turnaround loop for the bottom. So... We're under the layout right now, and it'll it'll follow the turn of the bench work that's already there, all the tracks, and then it'll close up probably around here somewhere where we have a single main, and that'll be what connects. You know, it'll it'll be parallel, but the outside will be going this way, and the inside will be going that way, and then uh, it'll connect by the time we get around here somewhere back into this, that'll be the reversal. It'll be back into the climb up to the uh the starting point which is there so any trains coming down you know would have to wait until that train gets to the staircase before i can allow the next one to come up um i mean if i could squeeze two tracks that would be even better because i can have a train coming up while the other ones come down but i don't want to take away from what's up here necessarily so um i gotta i'll figure that out all right, but that's basically the main. And then, obviously, I'll have spurs as I go through the layout for industries and, you know, whatever I'm going to decide to to model. Um, the other thing is the, the, the TV is going to be basically my computer panel. So it'll be nice to have the TV with JMRI and whatever I'm running here um, uh, connected to the software. And um, I'm not sure where my, my hub is going to be, but I'm assuming it will probably be behind, you know, like under the stairs. So I'll have my, my uh, command station and all my, you know, uh, block detection and things like that probably in this pocket here, like tucked away nicely. And I, I did put an outlet here on purpose for that reason, so that I can have, you know, that kind of put away there. Um, but yeah, so that's basically it. That's gonna be the layout. It's, it's, it, I think it's pretty big considering the space. I think it's gonna be plenty of, of track where I can do a run and keep me keep my interest, you know, um, and not get bored because it's gonna be such a long run uh, with almost three decks um, around the basement. Um, and obviously any other things that I do with Operations in the short line and all that stuff is going to add to the to the uh, operation value uh, And I do plan on having operation sessions that, that I can actually fit people in here with um, You know, that'll be kind of like the loungy area. It's not a lot, but at least people can stand there while they're waiting uh, Or I'll have like a couple of stools or whatever they can, you know, sit there um, But I do want to have more than I had with my, my end scale layout. I tried to have a few operations few sessions and uh, you, once you got two or three people in there it was too too tight already like you couldn't get past each other the ceilings were too low and you were hitting your head against the 
angle ceilings and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I think this will be a lot more enjoyable when you have a few people down here. Um, the, other, the other thing that, uh, the one thing that's bothering me about the lower level is that I didn't want to be able to follow the train all the way through the entire layout. But I didn't want to sacrifice having to push the bottom part of the peninsula too far back this way because I, I want the line, I don't want it to be like turn, 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 everything turning, 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 and then the only straight thing that you have is there, you know, and, and, then, and then there's no straight line anywhere. So um, that's why I decided to, to go all the way through because at least you have kind of a straight line all the way through before it takes a turn there. So, you know, it's, it's a little tiny wall. Once the train gets to the tunnel there, all you gotta do is walk around to the other side and you'll see it again. So I think that's, that's a good compromise right there. So that's it. This is the last video that you'll see without bench work. I'm going to start there with the bench work, with the yard, because that'll dictate basically the, the main height of the entire layout. And once I'm comfortable with that, then I'll start expanding over to, to this side of the, of the area. Because um, I do want to get this puzzle figured out before I, I, I get into the return part. Uh, once I get the, the track that's going under and the bridge and the third level and the split of levels on the other side of the wall, then I'll be, everything else I think will connect kind of easily without, any, uh, without too much uh, of a headache. So that's basically it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video. I'm looking to go, you know, and get some supplies tomorrow uh, to get started on my bench work. Um, so that's it. All right. Thank you.